I was out early this morning to put up the camera for a time lapse. I need to go back to the camera to check if the lighting is still okay. When I came back about 20 minutes later, the lens had fogged over. Usually when I come inside with the cold camera, the lens fogs over. But the camera had been there for more than an hour and just suddenly the lens started to fog over. But here's the final result anyway. In the last episode, we called this a homestead. Well, that is not entirely correct. This is called a Febovald. And in this episode, we're gonna try to explain what a Febovald is to you. We have borrowed a snowmobile from Tuva's parents, and today we're gonna visit other Febovalds in this area. Okay, so this place is located about 8 kilometers from the village. In the past, a lot of farms had access to places like this, and this is called färbod in Swedish. It was common to have two färbodar per farm. One spring and autumn färbod, like 5 kilometers from the village, and one summer färbod, about 15 kilometers from the village. In Scandinavia we have had Fabuda for a very long time, about 2000 years they have existed in some form. We haven't found a word in English to describe the word Fabud, but to try to explain it, it means like Fa is the animals, the cattle, the sheep and the goats, and Bud means house, so cattle house. In Switzerland they have something similar called chalet or chalet. I don't know how to pronounce it. They used the fabud to relieve the strained pastures around the villages and to save the hay around the village to the winter feed. In the middle of June, the milkmaids walked with the animals from the farm to the spring fabud. 
and they stayed there until the middle of July and from there they went the long way to the summer Fairboard. In the summer Fairboard they stayed for about five weeks and then they went back to the spring autumn Fairboard, closer to the village. They moved around like this because if the animals stayed in one place all year round, the food wouldn't be enough. In mid-September they moved back to the farm in the village again. This was a woman's world, so the milkmaids were often alone in these places. If there are two maids, one of them herded the cattle by day and the other one took care of the milk, making butter and cheese and a Swedish specialty called mesmör or mese. They had long working days. They started about four in the morning with the daily preparation and the milking of the cows. If the maid were alone at the fabud, she would let the animals out to roam on their own. They always had a leader cow with a bell and the other ones would follow that one. And when there's time to come home, the milkmaid will sing them home. And it's called kula or coca. This is called the bustuga and it's the room where the milkmaids lived. This fireplace was only used for heat, there was no stove here then. All the preparations with the milk was made outside in a shed called Kokus. This is the old food cellar where they used to store the cheeses and the cream and the butter. And this is the Kokus, or the cooking house or outdoor kitchen where they made mesmer, mesen, and the cheese. The use of fabudar and the tradition of scything and letting the animals graze the fields have made a very special environment for plants. Nowadays a lot of ground gets overgrown. There's much less domesticated cattle and sheep and goats in the forests and on the fields. And the farmers put fertilizers and put a plow in the earth. These special kind of plants disappears and with them a ton of butterflies and insects too. Every fabud looks different, but the average fabud has one cabin to live in, one cooking house, one cellar to have the food in and one cow house. In this area around here, there has been at least five fabudar pretty close to each other. It's like a small village outside the village. Since they stop use, these fabud are in this place. The trees have grown up in what used to be meadows. And then the forestry companies came and now it's the other way around. No trees and a lot of trees. <laughs> Hopefully you have learned what a Fäbuval is now. This is also a Fäbuval, but it's closer to the village. Our dream is to restore this Fäbuval and have some goats roaming in these forests and on these meadows. This is where the cows lived in summertime. And on this side of the house, the caretaker of the cows lived. This is the former outdoor kitchen for this Fäbuval. It's not in a great shape, but we have built a new one. There is not much left of this barn. So we have a lot to do to restore this Fäbuval to its former glory. <laughs>